Hi, my name is Jeremy Chambers. I'd like to share with you a message that's changed my life and has changed many people's lives. It's a message from the Bible. And I'm going to share it with you through this little cube. It's called an Avanja cube. Now, it may look a little cheesy at first, but bear with me. In this cube is perhaps one of the most important messages that you may ever hear in your entire life. I've shared this with people all over the world and seen its message, the message from the Bible, change people's lives. This light represents God. God is perfect and just. The Bible says that he's holy and in him there is no sin. This little man represents all of mankind. You, me, everyone. And the darkness around him represents the sin. The problem is that we have sinned and our sins have separated us from God. The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That means that we've all sinned, done wrong things, and we've fallen short of God's standards. Perhaps it can be illustrated like this. Imagine that you had a dog and... Let's say the dog was outside, and it was raining, and it was muddy, and your dog is muddy, rolling around, playing in the dirt. And you're inside, and you're cleaning your house, and you're spending the whole day vacuuming and, and cleaning everything because you have a party that night, and friends are coming over. Now, you want your dog to come in the house because you love your dog, and you hear him barking at the door, but before the dog can come in the house, he needs to be clean. And that's the same way it is with us and God. God wants us to be in his presence, but before we can enter in, our sins need to be cleansed from ourselves. This poses the largest dilemma to ever exist. How can sinners be in the presence of a holy God? Well, God, being all-wise, came up with a perfect solution. He sent his son, Jesus. Jesus came and died on the cross. Now, in order to understand why he would die on the cross, you need to understand something about the nature of sin. The Bible says that the payment of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And if we've all sinned, then we all deserve to die. So here, God has to punish us, but then he loves us. So Jesus came and he took the punishment that we deserve on the cross. Jesus was without sin, the Bible says in John 3.16 that God so loved the world that he sent his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. This can be illustrated as follows. Now the story I'm about to tell you is, is not a true story, but it's just an illustration. Imagine years ago there was a king and a large kingdom and he said there can be no stealing. But there was a thief and the thief kept stealing and he said, well, if we catch a thief, that thief will get 20 lashes with a rod. And the stealing continued. So he uh, raised the level of the punishment and said, well, we will give them 40 lashes with a rod if we catch them. And finally, they caught the thief. And to everyone's amazement and horror, the thief was the king's mother, a little old lady. Now, she could have had anything she wanted, but she had continued to sin. She had continued to steal so the whole nation wondered, what will this king do? If he fulfills the law, he will allow this little old lady to get beaten with 40 lashes, and usually only the strongest men could take that kind of punishment. And what kind of king would let his mother die? Doesn't he love her? Yet the nation also said, well, if he lets her off the hook, what kind of king will break his own law? So, on the one hand, the law has to be upheld. And on the other hand, the king is struggling because he loves his mother. So the day of the punishment arrived. And the, everyone watched to see what would the king do. And as the executioner raised the rod to beat the old lady on the back, the king came out and he said, wait. And he put his arms around her. And he said, let the execution continue. And the beating was on his back. And this way, the king fulfilled the law, and he demonstrated love. The law said that someone had to pay, and he took that payment in her place. That's what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross 2,000 years ago. He took the punishment that we deserve on himself, and he was holy and without sin. He didn't deserve that punishment. Now, Jesus was in the tomb for three days, 
and they put guards on the tomb, on the outside, to make sure that no one would steal the body. But on the third day, just as Jesus had predicted, he rose from the dead. Now you may be thinking, well, that sounds crazy. Bear with me for a sec. If Jesus was God in human form, then he would have power over life and death. And God can raise himself out of the tomb. And that's what Jesus did. He defeated death and he defeated sin. And now because of that, that payment, Jesus is the way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Now we can be forgiven of our sins. The Bible says the payment of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Now, it's not enough just to believe this in your head. Uh, the Bible says that even the demons believe in Jesus, and they're afraid, and, and they're not going to go to heaven. Uh, the head knowledge isn't enough, but it's more so genuine faith. And there's an illustration of what faith is. You may have seen many tightrope walkers, and imagine a tightrope walker stretching out... Um, his rope across a giant waterfall and he walks across and the crowd watches and they cheer and then he, he goes and he does uh, tricks on the way back and he juggles while walking across and everyone's amazed and then finally he says to the crowd how many of you think I could put someone on my back and carry them across and everyone goes yeah yeah do it and everyone's cheering and then he says okay do I have any volunteers and everyone's like yeah they get really quiet because suddenly they realize, well, they believe he could do it, but they're not willing to put their faith in him to take them across. It's the same way with us and Christ. Many of us believe that Jesus may have been raised from the dead, but we need to actually put our faith in him and follow him and submit our lives to his lordship. You can do that right now. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that, that God raised him from the dead, that you are saved. And if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I can lead you in a prayer right now. And we can speak those words of faith up to the Lord. You can repent of your sins and be forgiven. But remember, it's not just the words. It's not just the head knowledge that saves you, but the Lord is looking in your heart. He knows your heart. And He sees if there is true faith. Pray with me, please. Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and that my sins have separated me from you. I confess my sins and I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to change my life. Give me faith. Become Lord of my life. I submit to Jesus Christ. I want to follow you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, on the back here, there's a little, a little bit of a follow-up. If you made that decision, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, and you really meant it, you see this little heart here, that represents the love of God. Not only does God love us, but we're to love others and to show love, and show love to those around us. The Bible says that if we love him, we'll obey his commands. And we can learn his commands by right here. This represents reading the Bible. We need to read the Bible on a daily basis. The Bible is the word of God. It's like a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. This here represents prayer. Prayer is just simply talking with the Lord like what we just did. This is something that we should constantly be doing. Always communicating with the Lord. These are essential to growing in Christ. This represents fellowship. Uh, the Christian life is not simply a lone ranger life. But it's walking with the Lord and walking with others. Um, when we go to church, when we meet with other Christians, we have accountability and encouragement. We need this. And finally... This represents telling others about Jesus Christ. Who do you know in your life who does not know Jesus Christ, who does not have this hope? Thank you for your time.